Welcome in Braves Today, bravestoday.com, all brought to you by none other than Plains Coffee. Go to plainscoffee.com, promo code BRAVES, get your 10% off. He's Lindsey Crosby. I'm Ben Taylor. All-stars are out. The Phillies go down. And now we head on to take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. And Lindsey, it is just one of those busy pods that we I promise we will keep short. I will not make you go 45 minutes. <laughs> No pun intended. Uh, so let's start a little bit with All Stars, just because that's the most recent thing that has come out. Because that came out after the game, official yep. announcements were made. Of course, it's Ozuna Lopez and sale for the Braves. No shocker there. Are you shocked at the quote unquote snubs with Freed and with the push for Chavez uh, for him to possibly be on there? Um. So I guess I'll take him one at a time for Freed. When you look at Max Freed's stats, like we always do that thing where we take out those first two starts because of how bad they were. Yeah. His overall record is three eighteen. Uh, sorry, his ERA is three eighteen, mm-hmm. and I believe most of the guys announced for the game have records better than that. Yeah, ERA is better than that. Now, obviously, we're looking at the whole. It's like, yeah. After those two disastrous starts, he has a 2.41 ERA, and the you know he's seven and four. But it feels like I under I don't like it, but I understand yeah. why they left him out. What was the first impression of Max Fried? A lot of people got this year, get knocked out in the first inning against Philly, and then turning right around and giving up seven runs and four and a third against Arizona. Yep. It's really hard to overcome that. And I actually wrote the piece a couple weeks ago about like Max Freed can still win the Cy Young. And he absolutely can still win the yeah. Cy Young. But I understand why he wasn't picked for the All-Star game because of the rough start that he had, how it's really a popularity contest, and um, how he hasn't gone he hasn't gotten the ERA down enough to make up for that rough start to be selected for an award like that. Yeah, and We also, when we look at it, we look at it as Braves fans of the people that are complaining about the snub. And yes, we understand that he's one of the most dominant pitchers on the staff. We understand, in our opinion, he's probably one of the most dominant pitchers in the National League. However, Mm -hmm. when it comes to all-star selections, it's the old Walmart test. You go ask the person, the first hundred people walking through the door at Walmart in Indiana, about Max Freed, they may or may not know who we're talking about. So it's a popularity contest. It is. I mean, that's the only reason Kyle Schwarber made the second spot for DH over Marcelo Zuna is yeah. the fact it's a popularity contest. If you go by the stats, Marcelo Zuna absolutely should have been one of the two DHs picked up front mm-hmm. along with Shohei Otani, but it's a popularity contest. I yeah. mean, it it is what it is. Um, for Chavez. Still a chance he gets in, right? Yeah. They do a lot of, like relievers. It is very, very tough for a non closer reliever to make the all star game yep. outside of the injury or unavailable replacement thing or the manager selections, simply because yep. you don't like. We are, we're Briggs fans. We're campaigning for Jesse Chavez. We've seen the shirts everybody had. The average baseball fan does not know who Jesse Chavez is and he's not putting up the top of the leaderboard saves or strikeouts Mm -hmm. or highlights if people still watch those so I get it there is still time for him to be selected to the game as an alternate that may or may not happen I don't quite know how many relievers are going to be unavailable for the all-star game but um I, I I get it I don't love it but again I get it and it's disappointed. It absolutely is. I know they, the team really wanted him to go. Um, I think if the if the Braves were on track to lose 100 games, right, and nobody on the team was really deserving of an all-star spot, they right. probably would have taken somebody like him to be the one guy. Mm-hmm. But because you don't have the advantage of they have to pick someone, um, then you just don't get him in on the first initial unveiling of the roster. With the ones that did get picked, uh, you already mentioned Ozuna. No surprise there, even though this biggest surprise, I'm like you, he probably should have gotten top nod just because he's leading the league in RBIs. Uh, You know, he's he's up there. I'm not naive enough to think he'll get him over Shohei, but I do think he should have been one of the top two. He should have gotten him over Schwarber. 
from a yeah. purely statistical standpoint. But again, it's a popularity contest. So the other two in um, Lopez and Sale, they're actually slated to start in a, in San Diego that last series before the All Star break. Do we get yeah. to see them in the All Star game? Probably not. I would think. I'm I'm guessing we're not going to see one of those two. Yeah, it, I would imagine. I've thought already about you know does Atlanta skip Ronaldo Lopez in that last series of the year to give him kind of an extended break using the All Star game? Um, I don't know. Chris Sale, similar boat. Uh, I think he'll go. I don't think he'll actually pitch because again he's going to pitch. He's going to start that weekend, but like. I think he has a case. Not, not going to get. It's not going to happen. I think he's a case to be to be the starter in yes. the All Star game. He leads MLB and wins with eleven. His field and independent pitching two two six. His WHIP nine one three. Those all lead baseball. And his strikeout to walk ratio is one of the best. Uh, it leads the National League and one of the best in baseball. Right, like it's, it's a six six eight. So almost seven strikeouts for yeah. every walk. He's allowed in ninety nine and two thirds innings. He's allowed 19 walks, but he struck out 127 batters. It's absurd. The yeah. dude's having the best season of his career since those classic White Sox in Boston days. And it's just, I love it. I'm so happy for him. This is his first All-Star knots since 2018. I yeah, love it. Crazy. So I'm so thrilled for him. Yeah. And I, I kind of want him, I'm like you, I kind of want him to maybe pull somebody up to throw, maybe go a bullpen game during the San Diego series. Who knows? Uh, we shall see. It's all been brought to you by Plains Coffee. Go to plainscoffee.com. Promo code BRAVES. Get your 10% off. They will roast those beans as soon as you make your order and ship them to your front door. Flavored coffees as well as teas. If you do like tea, go to plainscoffee.com. Promo code BRAVES. Your 10% off. All right, I do want to touch it before we get into Arizona. Touch on the Philly series a little bit. I think that was a big win. You and I on the last pod, we talked about I'd mentioned, and, and you you said a version of this as well. I'd said I thought that the San Francisco series was must win, and the reason being is because it is a, a sub-500 team. I think those are teams you have to beat whenever you're playing throughout the season if you're going to you know, try to make a run at the end of the season. Uh, and then when they did not win that series, I thought, well, great. Now the Philly series is a must-win series. They did win, but I think one of the most important things is the bats finally got rolling a little bit. Yeah, Atlanta hit, um, well, I think it was either eight or nine home runs in the three-game series. Um, Albies popped off. Ozuna popped off. Yeah. After moving back to the fifth spot in the order, something we talked about, I think, in the previous pod. Uh, him and, you know, him and Riley probably needing to swap back to where they were. And I, I understand that Philly is missing some players, right? They're missing Bryce Harper. They're missing Kyle Schwarber. They're missing JT Real Muto. Three important members of their lineup. Right. I get that. Um, Atlanta's in a similar boat. Atlanta's <laughs> missing Ronald Acuna Jr. Atlanta's missing Michael Harris. Um, Atlanta's missing Spencer Strider, you know, the who led the league in strikeouts last year, led the yeah. league in wins last year. They're missing, you know, Ronald Acuna Jr. was the MVP after putting up the fifth 40 40 season in history. And Michael Harris was. Gold Glove caliber defender that bat almost 300. Like, mm -hmm. at this point in the season, and it's the same in October, it doesn't matter if you're injured or not. you got to win the game. Everybody's nicked up. Everybody's tired. Everybody's missing players. Atlanta managed to get it done in a way that I wasn't really expecting. I didn't think Max Freed to be the one that gave up five runs. Right. I was not expecting Atlanta to just slug the. I was expecting Atlanta to be the team that just hit a ton of home runs. Like I was not seeing a lot of those things happening. I wasn't expecting Atlanta to be the team to have three dumb errors on defense. Yep. Atlanta entered that series. Actually, enters this next series, leading baseball in fewest errors, like committed. Right. Yep. Like they've been a good defensive team. Um. But. That's a small sample size in baseball, right? All of those things can happen when you play three games. And uh, it's now that Atlanta's now won both of their series against Philadelphia. Uh, one of them, Philly was at full health. One of them, neither team was at full health. And um, I think it bodes well for Atlanta knowing that, hey, we still 
have a, ch- a legitimate chance at coming back to take the NL East. Because if you went into this series, you went, you went in, um, I believe it was 10 games down. You went in 10 games back. If you go in and you lose two out of three and that loss gets farther into the double digits, you become 12 games back or 14 games back if, if, if you're swept or something, you're in trouble, right? Yeah. But Atlanta turns around and um, cuts two games off the standings. You're now only eight games back. Uh, the Diamondbacks, who you're playing next, haven't been great. The Padres have a winning record. They're a wild card team right now. They're, I think, they're third in the wild card as of today. Mm-hmm. But you have a chance here to make up some ground with Michael Harris progressing towards a return, AJ Smith Shaver progressing towards a return, and Spencer Swellenbach really settling into that fifth spot in the rotation. I dropped like thirteen hundred words on Sunday morning about how impressive Spencer Swellenbach's growth has been yes. since he came up. He's much better than a 502 ERA. And I think that these teams, provided Atlanta can get can get the bat on the ball and launch some balls, I think these teams match up a lot better than maybe Philly fans thought they were going to um, um, three weeks ago or a month ago. Yeah, and now with the Diamondbacks, I mean, it's a four-game series that basically no rest for the weary is is it'll head into the um they'll they'll head to the All Star break uh, with Arizona well, no. and San Diego. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. They'll do a night game on Thursday in mm-hmm. Arizona, and then go to San Diego and play them the very next day. It's not it's not a it's not a day game getaway day. It's a nine forty p.m. Eastern start on Thursday night, which is dumb. But whatever. <laughs> We've <laughs> talked so much about this. Why are you making teams play late at night? on a travel day, let them play a day game like everybody else does and then fly that night and not have to worry about it. Get a normal night of sleep and play again on Friday. Come on, MLB. What are we doing here? Is this the, what we've seen over the last two games? Well, well, even the run scored in in game one of the Philly series, the bats still were up and running. Max free just gave up five runs and there were a bunch of errors committed. I have the bats awakened now heading into the all-star break. I mean, is this something that we can expect to see against Arizona and San Diego the next couple of next week and a half? The last time we said yes, the Braves had back-to-back two-to-one games against the Tigers. I'm not (laughs) going to say yes. I'm not going to say, I don't want to jinx it, right? But it feels, it feels different. Yeah. Feels different right now than it has in the past. If you look at uh, the last 15 days, right, Ozzie Albies is batting 273. Jared Kelnick has been a machine at leadoff. Yes, he is. Just has. crushing home runs, batting like 280. It's nuts. Um, and then if you look at like even just the last week, Adam Duvall is batting 300 yep. in the last week. Ozzy Albies is batting almost 400 in the last week, right? And and Marcelo Zuna, who dealt with that minor slump. There was an article in The Athletic from Dave mm-hmm. O'Brien about how he had, for some stupid reason, tried to change what he was doing at the plate. And they said, hey, just go back to that thing you did that worked for a year. Yes. And so we went back to it. And what did he do? He hits two home runs this series against Philly. So it – this feels different from some of the other rallies because we're seeing production again deep in the lineup, right? Eli White hit a home run. Orlando Arcia had multiple hits and an intentional walk yeah. in this series. Like, like you can see them going and and it just it feels different from the rest of them. I'm gonna not definitively say the bats are back. I don't want to jinx it. Right. But I'll just say it feels different than the last time the offense got on a here. And, and they did really well in Arizona last time they went, although a lot of that was Eddie Rosario. Well, and who knows? We may see him called up. I'm not real sure. Eli White might get left in Atlanta, and Eddie Rosario <laughs> might come up for the series. They're like, listen, I know you just got here, but we know you hate the NL West, okay? Yeah. So we need you to come repeat last season's performance against the Diamondbacks. No doubt. And I will and, and give credit where credit is due. There are a lot of people that have chirped about the pitching. After the last game of the series against the Phillies, the Braves still continued to be the Major League Baseball leader, leader in shutouts. And mm-hmm. I think that that's, that's impressive uh, because you and I have talked about that before. 
there, there are a couple of things that are really hard to do at the major league level. And number one, that is shutout teams. And number two, that is sweep teams. And the Braves have done both this season very well against various teams, regardless of how bad somebody may say a team is or who may be missing on the team. I'm tired of hearing that just because the Braves the last few years, we dealt with Ronald being out during the World Series year. We dealt with Ronald being out this year. We got freed with blisters. And now we've got and a four with Tommy trade. John. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's one of those deals where when the people get to complain and it's like, okay, well, cry me a river. This is what we've dealt with the last, let's just say In- five years that the Braves have, have been making these runs. There is not a single baseball team out there that does not have a player on the IL. Everybody right. is hurt. And what matters is how good is your depth that steps up to replace them? How resourceful is your GM when you have to make a trade? And uh, what other options do you have? How do you handle those guys being out? Like That's all there is to it, right? Um, imagine what this season would look like without Strider, without Harris, without Acuna. Had Atlanta not gone out and got Ronaldo Lopez oh. and Chris Sale and Jared Kelnick, imagine what this what would your outfield defense look like if you didn't have Jared Kelnick? You're playing Forrest Wall in center field every day. Yeah. Right? Uh, your pitching staff. You've got Dylan Dodd and Bryce Elder up starting two of them every five games because you don't have any other options. Like it's all it, everybody in Major League Baseball is not feeling great right now. And every team is dealing with injuries. And all that matters is how well you perform despite those injuries and how well your general manager and your front office constructed a roster to still play despite those injuries. That's all that matters. I'm this coming week. So uh, it's... All right, so I've got them taking the split. I hope they prove me wrong. Two of four in Arizona. Uh, and the one reason being is just because I still know Arizona is right now. Uh, they don't have, you know, they got a couple of guys that were all-stars last year that are not all-stars this year. They're not having the year, but mm-hmm. they are starting to break out a little bit. So it seems like maybe a little confidence is headed their way. So I'm going to go two of four in Arizona. I'm going to say three and one. I just spent 45 minutes talking to one of their beat writers for a preview podcast on his side, not on ours. And uh, they, they've they got a lot of questions about the offense, right? Their strikeouts are up. Power yep. production is down. Um, the running game, a lot of their their uh, stolen bases are gone from this year. They've been, had some guys nicked up. Um, but then also, the, the, the pitching's a question. They have officially announced two of the four starters. You've got Chris Sale versus prospect Gilbert Diaz making his debut in game one, and Charlie Morton versus Zach Gowan in game two. Uh, they're holding a TBD on game three versus Max Freed. That is supposed to be um, um, Brandon Fought, the postseason uh, hero from last year. Yeah. And then uh, game four on Thursday against Butcher Schwellenbach, that is also a TBD. I believe that's supposed to be Slade Sassoni coming off the IL. So, like, They've got a lot up up in the air. They've got questions. They don't trust anybody in the bullpen outside maybe the back three. So if you get a starter knocked out early, which Gilbert Diaz, a prospect, making his debut, could very well get knocked out early, uh, Atlanta's going to be able to put some runs up. Um, I've I've got this three and one, and I think it's more likely than not that Atlanta sweeps versus going two and two, but I've got a three and one. He's Lindsey Crosby. I'm Ben Taylor. It's been brought to you by Plains Coffee. Go to plainscoffee.com, promo code BRAVES. Get your 10% off. Lindsey's got a ton of stuff that's up on Braves today. Go see takeaways as well from the Philly series. Plus, you can share it online and get Philly fans mad because of that, which always makes for a good time as well. Lindsey, as always, thank you, man.
Thanks, buddy.